Today, scientists are analyzing material from America's most intriguing archaeological site, the Windover Bog in Florida. This rare material holds vital clues to the origins of native North Americans, and the scientists are on the brink of an incredible discovery. Yet the story of the unearthing of the Windover site itself is just as remarkable as anything they found buried within it. Cape Canaveral, southern Florida. 220 square miles of undisturbed marshland on the outskirts of the shuttle launch site. In January 1982, this landscape was to change forever. The remote district of Windover would be the site of 50 luxury homes. To prepare the road leading to the Windover housing project, construction worker Steve Vanderjack needed to clear a path through a marshy area known as the Windover Bog. Before long, something unusual caught his eye. It looked like a rock. The first one that came out, when I threw it off to the side to dump it out, I saw it roll off from the pile a little bit, and I found it a little strange, because you don't see a lot of rocks and stones here coming out. So I jumped off to take a look to see what it was that I did pick up out of there. And as I turned it around, it was looking at me. And that's, that's when we stopped. In the bucket of his backhoe, Steve Vanderjack had found human remains, a skull. Vanderjack thought he'd stumbled upon evidence of murder. Maybe some foul place, maybe an accident, maybe somebody stumbled off in there, or you don't know. News of the discovery traveled fast, and chief developer Jim Swan rushed to the site. Well, there's a, a flurry of excitement. They called me down, and I went down, and, and they had a bucket, a five-gallon bucket, with this uh, skull looking up at me that they had recovered out here on the, on the site. I'm no expert in that stuff, but it was so beautiful and old. The tannin had gone into the skull, and it was a gorgeous color of shiny brown, so I didn't think it was anything new about it. Jim Swan's instincts told him this was no modern burial and could be of enormous archaeological significance. Where there was one skull, there could be many. Jim Swan suspected they were onto something big. He summoned the help of anthropologist Glenn Doran, then a young assistant professor at Florida State University, and an expert on human bog remains. Within weeks of the remarkable discovery of the skull, Glenn Doran arrived in Windover to examine the bog. He was intrigued by what he saw. There was a relatively small, little nasty water black pond, and at first glance, it didn't look like a particularly inviting place for an archaeological site. But then we got out and we started walking up and down and looking at the, the piles of peat. And within just a few minutes, we started seeing clusters of human skeletal material. Immediately, Glenn Doran found clues to the age of the site in the skull's recently exposed teeth. Modern teeth are smooth and intact. Ancient ones worn down. The dramatic wear on these teeth told Glenn Doran the Windover site was older than anyone imagined. You could look at the teeth and instantly see that no, this was not a crime scene, this was not a forensic case. It was clearly somebody who had lived, you know, thousands of years ago. Most human remains found in Florida are less than 500 years old. Glenn Doran's big challenge was to study the bog's hidden clues to figure out exactly how much older the Windover bones could be. There were a couple of things that were immediately obvious and interesting. One is the skeletal material was extremely well preserved. Secondly, when you looked in the peat itself, you didn't see any, any ceramic material. And ceramics to us are an indication of materials of the last, say, 4,000 years. But the fact that there wasn't any ceramic material in there was really the first hint that this material could be quite old. Glenn Doran suspected the remains could date as far back as 1,500 BC to around the same time as King Tutankhamun in Egypt. But to be certain, he needed to send a sample of Windover bone to be radiocarbon dated. So we took some of the bone samples, sent them off to the lab, and then it was a, a waiting game. And then finally, we got the word back that the materials were over 7,000 years old. I mean, you, we were really walking on clouds. I mean, it just unbelievably exceeded our, our expectation. 
we knew we had this just incredible once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Glenn Doran had stumbled on the exceptionally rare remains of ancient Americans. So rare that the five skulls and three bones he'd found were already the largest human collection of this age in America. It really gives us the most vivid picture of prehistoric life you can possibly imagine. It gives us more information to get really right down to the nitty gritty of everyday life, of health, of sickness, the human tragedy of injury and disease. What was it really like to be alive in Florida seven plus thousand years ago? The Windover bones belong to people who lived over 3,000 years before the first pyramids were built in Egypt, and almost 6,000 years before the birth of Christ. They were some of the very first people to set foot in the Americas. But to find out if there were more bones buried deep beneath the bog, Glenn Doran was faced with a monumental problem. He would have to drain the bog dry, and that meant pumping out millions of gallons of water. The plan is to put a well point system in, pump it out, and then start in this area of the pond itself. In 1984, after two solid years of planning and fundraising, 130 wells were sunk deep into the peat, pumping out 1,000 gallons of water a minute around the clock. As the Windover Marsh drained, Glenn Doran was confronted by a unique and breathtaking sight. This wasn't a scattering of bodies, but a cemetery. Doran's lucky find had turned into an archaeological treasure trove. Sealed in this extraordinary peaty grave, lay the remains of hundreds of men, women, and children of all ages. Glenn Doran could also make out bone and antler tools and delicately carved wooden objects that had survived for over 7,000 years. What could be learned from Windover was tantalizing. It was everything Doran had hoped for and more. Sealed in an airtight cocoon of peat, the fungi and bacteria that caused decay were shut out. What's more, the Windover peat itself was special. Not acidic like most peat, but neutral and perfect for the conservation of bones. It's virtually an optimal environment. You couldn't ask for a better preservation medium. By late 1986, Glenn Doran's excavation team had endured almost three years of painstaking exploration of southern Florida's Windover marshland. Mentally exhausted and physically drained, little did they know they were about to uncover their most significant find, a mysterious substance covering some of the bones. It was neither human flesh nor animal hide. Professor Doran thought he could detect tiny fibers. And you could see it. It was a piece of seven plus thousand year old twine. It was, in a sense, as good as the day it was manufactured. You could see the twist and it was obvious. This was hand woven fabric. If Doran's hunch was right, and these mystery fibers were the remains of a textile, then this would send shockwaves through the scientific community. These threads would be the oldest fabric of any importance in America, and the only surviving proof that such ancient people could weave. We were also pretty quick to realize that none of us on this team had had any experience in analyzing fabric materials. Doran contacted America's foremost expert on ancient textiles, Dr. James Adavazio. I and my late wife, Rhonda, went down and walked on the site on one of those days when it was 95 degrees, the humidity was 90 percent, the sweat was dripping all over the place. They physically uncovered the suspect area in one of the burials, and the light was just perfect to indicate that that's exactly what it was where textile remains. They would look at one and then they would move a few feet and look at the second one and then stand up and move to the third one. And after about an hour and a half of this, I asked Jim, I said, was it worth the plane ticket to Florida? And he stood up and he says, you better believe it. This is like nothing we've ever seen. So we in fact told them, well, these are twine textiles. 
And after the requisite leaping up and down and screaming and yelling, we decided to then figure out where to go next with all this. Once again, the discoveries at Windover were forcing scientists to jump the idea that ancient Americans were primitive people. By 1986, over 10,000 bones and hundreds of artifacts had been painstakingly excavated from the Windover bog. Dr. Joe Lorenz of the Coriel Institute in Camden, New Jersey, is performing brand new analysis of the brain DNA, using techniques no one had access to back in the 1980s. Lorenz is re-examining sections of DNA called haplogroups in the brains of five Windover people. He's looking for haplogroups found only in native North Americans, because finding them would corroborate all previous work. When I sequenced larger fragments and I was looking for the sites that I know are characteristic of Native American haplogroups, um, I was surprised because I did not find them. In contrast to all previous findings, Lorenz couldn't confirm the Windover people were Americans. Further investigation revealed something even more remarkable. I went back to the screen and I looked at the sequences again, the first person's DNA, it looked European. When I looked at the second one, it looked European. When I looked at the third, fourth, and fifth, they were slightly different from the first two, but they looked European. Lorenz had found DNA unlike any other from Native Americans. Most scientists believe that some 15,000 years ago, people walked from Asia across the landmass now covered by the Bering Straits into North America. Lorenz's results could be consistent with a new and controversial theory that proposes some of the earliest people migrated to America from Europe, perhaps by crossing an Atlantic Ocean significantly narrower than it is today. If our genetic analysis shows that these individuals really do belong to a new and previously unidentified lineage, founding lineage in the new world. It would be very big news. So the race is on to find the final proof. But for the moment, Lorenz's work has added to the mounting evidence of an early European migration and stirred the controversy over the most extraordinary journey in human history.